Hey guys, my name is Pixie and today we're going to talk about responsive app design. Responsive design is aimed at allowing the design to be viewed in response to the size of the screen. You see responsive design implemented on the web and mobile devices, anything where the screen can change its size. Just like not all TV sizes are the same, not all PC monitors are the same, not all Android phones are the same size, there might be a fraction of a difference, but they're all different. Because of that, we want to design our apps responsively so that the app looks virtually the same on every device. In Appy Builder, we're usually only working with phones, sometimes tablets, and we'll talk about that later in the video. Even though Android phones can have different sizes, we still want to be able to design for changes in screen orientation, like changing from portrait to landscape, and we want to make sure our app still looks good in both orientations. You can use the screen sizing property to specify whether you want your app to be fixed or responsive. When this option is set to fix, the screen size of your app is set to 320 pixels wide by 460 pixels tall, but it will scale to match the user's actual screen size. This means that if you're using low resolution images or you've hard coded the width and height property of your components, then your app will not display as you originally intended. Naturally, you'd want to use high resolution images for fixed and responsive screen sizing so you can maintain a higher quality on all screen sizes. When the sizing is set to responsive, then Appy Builder uses the actual number of pixels for the device that the app is currently running on. Using percentages to specify width and height will generally give you a more uniform look across multiple devices. If you have nested components, you'll want to use the automatic and fill parent options accordingly. Now let's take a look at an example using nested components and percentages to specify width. You may have seen me use this really simple layout in a few tutorials. I basically create little containers to section off content instead of throwing labels and images directly onto the background. Padding is very important in design and there are multiple different ways to create padding. Typically I will use what I call an invisible image or I will add padding into my images so I use less invisible components. As a general rule of thumb, you want padding on the top, bottom, left, and right of major components. This container would be considered a major component. Notice there is padding on all four sides of this container, and there is padding on all four sides within the container. Creating padding to the left and right is actually really easy. If we set the horizontal alignment to center, then we can just change the width percentage of this container so that it only takes up 90% of the screen width. We can horizontally center everything within this vertical alignment to replicate the effect. Percentage sizing is done a little differently than you might be used to if you've worked with Android Studio or you make websites. You might think logically that the components inside this container should also be set to 90% because the container is the parent element. However, the width property in this case still reflects the screen size, so we're actually setting this to 80%. And if we want to nest another container within this container, we would set the width to 70%. So this is 90% of the screen width, this is 80% of the screen width, and this is 70% of the screen width, and so on. The labels are actually set to 80% width, so they look like they maintain equal padding on the left and right sides. The height is going to be a little different. If we want padding on the top and bottom of these containers, we can just use an, an invisible component. What I've done is basically create an invisible PNG image that is 10 by 10 pixels. If I drop an image component above and below the container, then I can automatically have 10 pixels of padding just by setting the image property to invisible.png because the width and height of most components are set to automatic by default. I can always change the width and height of this invisible image at any time if I feel like I need more than 10 pixels of padding. And you'll see that when you rotate the screen, you don't have to code anything else. This container will automatically resize to fit 90% of the screen, and the components inside that container also resize accordingly. Now, let's look at an example where we dynamically set the width and height of components. Since this tutorial is covering concepts and best practices, you don't have to follow along with me. We're just going to go quickly through this. Notice on the screen I have a horizontal arrangement named Container Buttons, and inside the layout component I have seven buttons named Button 1 through Button 7. I've kept all the defaults on these buttons. The shape is set to default, the width and the height are set to automatic, nothing has been changed other than the text 1 through 7 that appears on each button. The screen size property is currently set to fixed, and the screen orientation is set to sensor. If we run this app, you'll notice that in portrait orientation, you can see the first four buttons, and button four seems to be smaller than the other three buttons that are visible. 
If we switch to landscape orientation, then we can see all seven buttons, but again, the last button seems to be smaller than the other six buttons. If we set the screen sizing to responsive and go back to portrait orientation, we still see only seven buttons, but they at least seem to be the same size. Switch back to landscape and we see all seven buttons and they seem to be the same size. Now, obviously, if we set our screen orientation to sensor, that probably means we want this app to look the same in both portrait and landscape orientation. And it currently does not look the same. Let's fix that. I'm going to change the shape of each of these buttons to rectangular. I'm doing this so that there won't be any padding in between these buttons, and we're going to dynamically set the width and the height of these buttons using the blocks editor. In the blocks editor, I have a variable named button list, and I've created my initialize list procedure that adds buttons one through seven to the button list. I initialize this list when the screen starts, but I also want to resize each of the buttons in this list to be a perfect square that takes up the entire width of the screen. The size of each button should be the screen width divided by the length of the button list. We know there are seven buttons on the screen, so I could easily say screen width divided by seven, but I don't think you should get in the habit of hard coding anything. Hard coding would be placing math block with the number seven here. What if you add three more buttons? Then you also have to change this block to 10. So we use the length of the list in case that list ever changes in the future. So screen width divided by seven might not result in a perfect whole number, but that's okay. You can round this if you want, but it's fine just the way it is right now. Now we're going to loop through the button list and set every width and height of each of these buttons to be button size. Call this procedure when the app starts, run the app again, and notice that the buttons are now perfect square and they take up the entire width of the screen. Remember that I changed the shape of the buttons to rectangular so there's no padding between the buttons whatsoever. Turn the app on its side, and again, we have perfectly squared buttons, but the buttons no longer fill the entire width of the screen. We have a lot of white space to the left and right side of the button container. What if we use the screen orientation changed event and called resize list when the screen changes orientation? Let's try adding that and testing the app again. We notice that the button size starts out good. We switch to landscape and don't see a change. There is still white space to the left and right side. That's not good. Go back to portrait and notice, whoa, something did happen, but not what we wanted. These larger buttons should appear in landscape mode, but not portrait mode. As programmers, we need to think logically, assess the situation. What is actually happening? The buttons are changing their size when the screen orientation changes. That's good, but what's the problem? The screen is changing orientation, and while the screen is rotating, the width and height of each button are supposed to change based on the screen width. So a new screen width is not apparent until the orientation has finished, which takes like a tenth of a second. And these blocks have already executed during that one tenth of a second from the screen changing orientation. To fix this, we can just use a clock component that delays these blocks from executing. In your clock component, uncheck timer always fired and uncheck timer enabled. A timer interval of 1000 is the same as one second. So changing the interval to 100 is one tenth of a second. In the blocks editor, we can create a variable named delay set to zero. Using a clock timer event, we set the delay to increase by one each time the clock ticks. And in this case, the clock ticks once every one tenth of a second. If the delay is greater than or equal to one, we can resize the list, reset delay to zero and disable the clock. In screen orientation changed event, take away resize list and replace it with clock timer enabled equals true. Test the app again, so far so good. Change the orientation to landscape and voila, the buttons are still a perfect square shape and they fill the entire width of the screen. Rotate back to portrait mode and they're good to go, fantastic. Even though we were focusing on button components, you may have noticed that the background looks a little wonky each time we switch to landscape. And it might be a little hard to see because the background is a subtle light gray pattern of diamonds. So let's use Wonder Woman as an example because she's awesome and we can see a more noticeable difference. I'm gonna hide this button container and change the background to Wonder Woman and also remove the title bar and the status bar. Launch the app again and notice that Wonder Woman looks really uncomfortable. She's like smushed inside of this tiny little space and she almost looks like she's melting. That's not cool. Switch to landscape mode and she looks a lot better here because the original image is by default in landscape orientation. So it's gonna look proportioned in landscape versus portrait. Now there's no design rule that says your background must look identical in portrait and landscape mode. That would be a very silly rule to follow for a rectangular shaped object. 
With a little bit of image editing, we can essentially center Wonder Woman so she looks proportioned in both screen orientations. Open up Photoshop or whatever image software that you're using and create the Android default design ratio. We've talked about this ratio in previous videos, but just to recap, the current standard in design is to create an image that is 1080 by 1920, which would be portrait mode, and for landscape it's the same numbers but the width and height are reversed. If you're using something like Android Studio to create your Android apps, then you want to keep this as is. Remember that Appy Builder or any of the App Adventure drag and drop platforms, it's good practice to design for your device because you're working with a little bit of limitations. And if you know you're designing for just a phone and not a tablet, we can resize this canvas to 30% of its original size, which gives us a new dimension of 324 by 576, which still maintains the 916 aspect ratio. Remember at the start of the video we said that if you're using a fixed size for your app, then the app is created using the dimensions 320 by 460, which you can see here is a little bit smaller than the dimensions we're using. Notice that there isn't much of a difference in the width, but there's a huge difference vertically. And I think this is to account for a title bar and a status bar, but also includes a generous amount of vertical space. I don't think that 320 by 460 is an accurate representation of a standard Android phone. So even though the original App Inventor documentation uses that size for a fixed screen, I'm completely throwing that out the window and I'm designing to the current standards for 2017, which is a 916 aspect ratio. That said, I'm going to take original Wonder Woman background and resize it to fit in this screen in portrait orientation. Now we're not seeing the entire image here, but she looks proportioned. That's what matters, that's what we're going for. I'll save this as background portrait, then I'm going to change the canvas size using the same width and height, just flip-flopped, and now I can see more of the image, but I definitely want to see her headpiece, so I just need to bring this image down a little bit more, making sure that we know this is Wonder Woman, and then save this as background landscape. Back in Appy Builder, I'll change the screen's background to the portrait version, and create a new procedure named Toggle Background. In this procedure, I'll say if the current screen background image is backgroundportrait.png, then change the screen's background image to backgroundlandscape.png. Otherwise, if the current screen background is landscape, then change it to portrait. In the previous example, we made the changes happen within the clock, but we can actually set this procedure in the screen orientation changed event and it will work perfectly. So run the app again and awesome, it's working as intended. I also recommend designing in Photoshop or whatever image software you want using a 916 aspect ratio. That will give you a better understanding of what your app is going to look like. Unfortunately, I don't have a tablet, so I specifically designed smaller for a phone, and as a result, I actually can't show you an example of what this looks like on a phone versus a tablet. So if you're wanting to design for a larger screen size, still follow the tips and best practices you saw in this video. <laughs> One thing we haven't quite covered is specific images. So if you're using a button with an image, for example, what is that button going to look like on a larger screen like a tablet? So let's say we're creating a layout in Photoshop and we place an image right here. If we want to recreate this kind of image with some text on the side, there are a couple of things to take note of. There's a padding on top of this container as well as to the left and the right side. You also probably want some padding below the container if you plan on adding anything else, and there should also be a small amount of padding between the image and the text. You could accomplish that by using an invisible image, or when you save this little image here, you can add some padding to the image on the right side so you don't need an invisible image at all. You could eyeball this and say that the image is roughly 20% of the screen width, or you could get a little more technical. The width of this canvas is 324, and the width of this image is 85 pixels. So 85 divided by 324 is 0.26 times 100 is 26%. In Appy Builder, we would set the width of this image to 26%. By default, this image is 85 by 85. It's a perfect square, but we can't set the height of the image to 26% because that's 26% of the screen size, and our phone is a rectangular shape. So 26% of the screen width is different than 26% of the screen's height. We would need to change the height of this image in the block section, just like we did with the previous examples. All right, to wrap this up, we need to talk about all App Inventor limitations. This includes Appy Builder, Thunkable, Makeroid, and any other platforms that stem from App Inventor. The App Inventor features support responsive design, but are limited and incomplete. The biggest limitation in responsive design is drawing on the canvas and using sprites for animation. 
In this case, it is recommended to use the fixed size option if you're using a canvas. Or if you're using responsive sizing, set the canvas to be a fixed number of pixels. The third approach is to use responsive sizing, but everything within that canvas should be percentages and simple math like dividing or multiplying based on the canvas width and height. You're just going to have to be aware of everything that you place in your canvas and you're going to have to do the math to make it look good. Lastly, apps created with App Inventor platforms like Appy Builder are considered compatible with phones and tablets. However, if you download from the Google Play Store to a tablet, you might see the comment designed for phones. This doesn't prevent your apps from running, but it indicates that Google has certain design guidelines that they want tablets to follow. But these guidelines as of right now are generally not possible to follow with App Inventor. Check out the Appy Builder community where you can discuss projects you're working on, stay up to date on current topics, and access tutorials created by community members. You can start building your own Android apps for free by visiting appybuilder.com, and you can also sign up for a free 30-day trial of Appy Builder's Gold Membership. Alrighty guys and gals, that's all for now. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. Don't forget to thumbs up the video and have a great day. Bye!